I'm gonna pop some tags. Only got twenty dollars in my pocket. I, I, I'm hunting, looking for a come up. All right, here we go. Let's take a look at the next section here. Uh, last section, we talked about rational expressions and simplifying, and I also introduced you to my favorite artist, uh, Drake. Uh, here's a little shout-out to Mr. Bean and his favorite artist. He's, he, he is so much into it. He made the cover of his thrift shop single there. Uh, there's Mr. Bean rocking out with his thrift store coat. Pretty amazing. Well played, Mr. Bean. That's awesome. So we're going to take rational expressions uh, one step farther here. And uh, let's multiply and divide them. So let's get this thing going. Okay, so just a quick review. Remember, rational numbers. Rational numbers are just any number A over B. So any kind of fraction where you can divide them. I always want to make the connection back to rational numbers before I get into these crazy expressions. So uh, if I'm going to multiply a rational number, it's something like, hey, I'm going to take one half and I'm going to times it by, I don't know, like eight ninths, something like this. So we can multiply these things. So if you want to multiply, remember the rule is you just multiply straight across the top. Multiply across the top, you get eight. Two times nine on bottom, you get 18. So we can do that. Is that reduced though? No, remember you're supposed to reduce it and say, oh yeah, two actually goes into both these numbers. Two goes into that four times, two goes into that nine times, and then I get four ninths. That's cool. Or because it's multiplication, because everything is multiplication, you actually could have done this little idea here where we're kind of going ahead and cross-canceling these things out. Um, but it's the same idea as dividing out a 2 here at the end. So if you like that, you get the same thing, uh, 4 ninths. It may be a little bit easier than trying to reduce it at the end. Uh, but technically, this it's kind of weird, but you're actually saying this is 2 times 4 is 8 and two times nine is 18. You're canceling out these twos and getting that four ninths. So that's why it works as a multiplication. So same thing here. We can actually multiply this all out and say four times nine is 36. X times X is X squared. Remember you add the exponents when you go X times X and you get that Y cubed. And then on bottom, what do you got? Three times two is six. You got X squared times an X, which is X cubed. And then you got the Y here. So when you're here, now we can say, oh yeah, sure, these things cancel. I can say, hey, this y is going to cancel out one of these, so you'll have two left up top. Uh, this x squared will cancel out two of those, and you get the one here. And then 6 goes into 36 six times. Um, so we're kind of doing the same thing. And what do we get here? So I got this kind of weird. My x's are gone. I'm left with what on top? 6y squared. And then on bottom, I've got just this one X left is all I have there. So it's kind of weird looking. If you don't like that, if you don't want to multiply it all out, you can cross cancel here. Uh, I think it's a bit easier to say, oh yeah, I can cross this out and say one, cross two goes into that. So two goes into four twice. Then you can say three goes into nine three times. Then I can start canceling. Hey, this X is going to cancel this X. Uh, this X will cancel one of these bad boys. So he's gone. And then this Y will change this to a two. You get the same answer. So if you like to cross cancel, 2 times 3 times y squared is that 6y squared. And then the only thing left on the bottom was that plain old x. As long as you get 6y squared over x, we are cool. All right, that's pretty crazy. So let's try it again. So if I have this, so it's easier. Uh, this was there's no factoring. These were just one single terms on each little part of the fraction. These, I'm going to uh, go ahead and break them down and do a little factoring. So what multiplies the 12? Adds the 7, it looks like x plus 3. So break them down. This will be x plus 3 times x plus 4. Then on top here, remember the first thing we factor we should look for is the greatest common factor. I know you guys are really good at factoring, but this one is like, oh, make sure you check this first. Go ahead and pull up the greatest common factor, which is a 3. I can undistribute a 3 out of this. And then here's one of those difference of square special cases, x plus 5, x minus 5. So if you break this all down, we could multiply it all out, but that's going to take some time. I'm going to go ahead and do the just cross cancels all multiplication. Uh, so I've got an x plus 3 here. I've got an x plus 3 here. Gone. I've got an x plus 5 right here. And remember, this is the whole quantity. This is the whole top up here. It's going to cancel that x plus 5. Uh, anything else? That's all that cancels. So what do I have left on top? Just that 3. And then what do I have on bottom? I have the x plus 4. And I have that x minus 5. I'm not going to multiply that out. Let's leave it in factored form. For these, I think it's a little bit easier to look at. <clears throat> so we'll leave that bad boy as uh, in factored form. Awesome. Very good. Let's do one more multiplication here. We're multiplying. So uh, this is multiplication, but this is not a fraction. So I don't have a rational expression. Well, everybody is, is divisible by something. This is just divisible by 1. So you can go ahead and rewrite it if you like to rewrite it. 
uh, you've got the first fraction plus 2n and we're going to times it by it's this 2n squared minus 5n minus 3 all over 1. So we got this bad boy right here. Boom, let's do some factoring. So the top n minus 3 is already factored. That's cool. Does this factor? Sure, I can take a 2n out. So if I take a 2n out of this, what's left? Well, 4 divided by 2 is 2. n squared turns to n and that gives me a plus 1. I took the 2n out. Oh my goodness, I'm going to have to multiply this, or I'm sorry, factor this. So you're going to have to do that whole last times first. What multiplies to give me negative, th I'm sorry, 3 times 2? We're looking for, hey, what multiplies to give me negative 6? And then adds or subtracts to give me negative 5. So what multiplies to negative 6, adds or subtracts to negative 5? Be careful, it's, it's tempting to say 2 and 3, but your signs are messed up on this. It's actually 6 and 1. Then you can do your factor by grouping. Uh, I'm going to kind of skip that step. I think you're going to get n minus 3 and then 2n plus 1. So be real careful with your signs. That should multiply out to this. If you need to do your grouping, show all your grouping work there. I just kind of guess and checked it, made sure it works out. That looks good. Now, does anything cancel? Sure, I've got 2n plus 1. Boom, 2n plus 1, they cancel. Anybody else? No, it's tempting. you got this n minus 3, but it's on top. It's not going to cancel. It's only going to be top to bottom here. And then the 2n doesn't cancel anything there. So I'm going to be left with on top n minus 3 times n minus 3. And you can write it out like that. I'm totally cool with that. n minus 3 times n minus 3 all over what? 2n. But really, what is n minus 3 times n minus 3? Yeah, that's going to be n minus 3 squared. So we're going to have something like that. That would probably be a nice, a uh, little bit cleaner answer right there. Either one's cool, though. So that is multiplication. Maybe do a little canceling uh, before, you, uh, before you multiply all that bad boy out, and you're good to go. Whew, almost there. Let's talk division. So we're going to do rational numbers, same idea. Like if I had, hey, what is one-third, and I'm going to divide it by, oh, I don't know, two two-fifths, let's say. So if I'm going to divide fractions, remember old school, how do you do fractions? Well, the rule is you division is multiplication. You're going to flip the second fraction and multiply. So it really becomes one-third times five halves. And then you do your multiplication rules. Multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom. You're good to go. Same thing with rational expressions. Remember, we're just throwing some things with some variables in here. If I'm going to go ahead and divide here, so look, you got to be careful. Really look at this symbol. So I've got the first fraction to divide. Uh, it's like multiplying. Like if you divide by two, you're really multiplying by one half. You're just flipping it over. So flip this upside down, becomes 15 over 6x. Now let's do a little canceling. I see this x cancels this x. Uh, five goes into five once, goes into this one three times. Looks like the three goes into the six, two, and then multiply across. What's left on top? Just that three. That is the only thing left on top. And what's on bottom? I got this two. I've got this x squared, so I've got two x squared fantastic right there so that's uh the same idea but we got a little cross cancel in there we're good to go all right so can we make it a little bit more challenging here sure like so these i definitely like to rewrite oh my goodness what two minus m we're gonna have to talk about that that is crazy uh we're gonna flip this upside down so it becomes what m squared minus four all over three m plus five and maybe you can factor as you go uh, on this so this is going to be kind of weird and I'm going to move it down a little bit here make sure I got plenty of room here so uh, let's go ahead and factor this out so on top m plus 5 I was going to factor this factors too well it doesn't factor but we're going to rewrite this you may want to here put a sign that this is weird or star or some way denote this that this is weird because really 2 minus m is negative m plus 2 I just changed the order totally allowed to do that I can change the order negative m plus 2 uh, why did I do that? Well, let's factor this negative out. I can take the negative out of this now because I don't like the lead term to be negative. So when it's negative m, undistributed negative 1, so that becomes m. What does this become? Minus 2. Like, great. What, what's the point of that? Well, check it out. Look at m squared minus 4. That's one of those differences of squares. m plus 2, m minus 2. And now, holy cow, see the cancellation coming up here? You've got m minus 2. I didn't see it here. It's 2 minus m. is really negative m minus 2. This cancels this. So if you ever get this weird thing, you're like, it looks like it should cancel. Well, probably if this, if the variable is negative, we gotta pull the negative out, and then maybe it will cancel for you. Also got this n plus five chilling over here. Cancel out that bad boy right there. Uh, what's left on top of all this mess? Well, uh, just the n plus two is all I see on top. How about on bottom? Don't forget that negative. That is, oh, it made it look like a positive. Don't forget this negative here. That is a negative 1. It means negative 1 times this. So it's negative 1 times 3 
you get a negative three. I think it's easier just leave that negative on bottom there. If you wanted to put him out front here, you could you could say this is the same thing. There he goes, right there. So you can put the negative in front. If you put it on top, you could, but you'd have to change uh, all the signs or put it in parentheses like that. So all three, three of those are the same thing. I think it's easier to just leave the negative in the bottom in this case or out front or to make sure you got the group symbol over there. So that's kind of a weird one that's going to come up. I threw a couple of those in the practice just to keep it real, make sure – uh, you're on it today. So here's another one with division. So again, everything is a fraction. It's just divisible by one. So if we rewrite this, we've got y minus four over y plus five. Uh, and then we're gonna say this is one over. So rewrite it as this. Now we're gonna try to break it down. Does it factor? I'm guessing it does. Uh, what multiplies to 36 and adds or subtracts to five? I'm guessing nine and four, is that right? So we've got uh, y plus nine y minus 4. In the end, does anybody cancel here? Sure, we've got y minus 4. This whole thing up here is going to cancel this bad boy. I think that's it. So on top, we're left with a 1. On bottom, we got that y plus 5. And we've got y plus 9. And we are good to go. We are killing it. We are cruising through this one. All right, so we're going to the last new thing here is complex fractions. And we're not going to get out of control with these. But basically, a complex fraction is a fraction in a fraction. So if I have one third and I'm gonna divide it by two fifths, yeah, that's a complex fraction. We're taking a fraction divided by a fraction. Really, what does this mean though? It's the same thing we were just doing, it's just a different way of writing it. It means one third is being divided by two fifths. But we're gonna look at it like this. And a lot of things coming up in the future are gonna look like this. So what do we do? Well, we're just gonna say it's one third. We're gonna flip that bottom fraction and multiply. So it becomes five halves. So it's the same thing we were doing. Don't be fooled by uh, how it looks. You still get five six, we're good to go. So if I'm checking out this rational expression, I'm just gonna rewrite my x over my x over four is the top fraction. Here's the top fraction. And I'm dividing by this bottom fraction. So I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna say it's five over two x. After you rewrite that, does anything cancel? Sure, these x's cancel. And then what's left on top, we've got one times five is five, four times two is eight, five over eight. That one worked out friendly. Nice, very nice. All right, so let's rewrite this bad boy. We've got x plus two over three is the top fraction. And we're being divided by the bottom fraction, so I'm gonna flip it over. It becomes nine over x squared minus four. In this case, we gotta do a little bit of work just to factor x squared minus four. Remember, that's a difference of squares, so let's just do this. And what's going to happen here? I'm going to do some canceling. So we're going to say, oh yeah, x plus 2, x plus 2. Uh, 3 goes into 9 three times. So I'm left with a 3 on top and an x minus 2 on bottom. Fantastic. 3 over x minus 2. That's awesome. And one last one. This one's kind of neat and uh, maybe you, you can see something going on here. But let's, let's, let's just do it and see what happens. So we've got 3 over 4x is the top one. Flip that bottom fraction to 4x over 5. And then what's nice about this, see how they cross cancel? You've got 4x and 4x. So you're left with 3 over 5. That's cool. And what happens here when they have the same denominator, top fraction and bottom fraction, you can just cancel right here. That's what's going to happen. They're going to cancel each other out. And you can see that 3 over 5. Pretty cool on that. All right, here we go. So let's wrap this bad boy up. I got four for you to try. So go ahead and pause this. And then I'm going to. I'm going to post the answers, and you can see how you do off the step-by-step -step solutions. Good luck. All right, here are the answers. I hope they match up with what you get. Oops, I forgot to box this one. Uh, the first one, uh, x over 2 times x minus 5. Here's the second answer right here. I tried to color code it with my first step in red, my second step in green. Did a little factoring and canceling, all that fun stuff. Had that weird special case here where you got to factor out that negative, and then it ends up canceling. That is awesome. I hope that went well for you. Uh, yeah. I'm going to end you with a little Macklemore from Mr. Bean's favorite. These are some uh, funny guys, I think, from Westlake High School. They make these funny math videos. Enjoy this. Hope you do well on the mesh check. Peace. <laughs>
But heck, you just had to multiply by two. Input, output, checking for relationships. I want association between sets of information. Take a look around this place. Parent height with one face. Saving my work, and I'm happy that's the case. I'm going to call your mama's phone. I'm going to call your mama's phone. No, for real. I called her. Nobody picked up. Typical. Graph functions and vertical line tests. This stuff's so easy, there's no more need to guess. I need a situation, so I worked on this equation. Analyze the terms, began to answer questions. Hello? Hello? This problem got me mellow. That dude ain't got nothing on my math game. Heck no. I could grab equation, check tables. That'd be cool. The nerds would be like, oh, that's not what I would do. I'm gonna up my grade. Only got a calculator in my pocket. Uh, uh, I'm hunting. Looking for a value to make this function awesome. 